This is a time of year that we see a lot of stress and anxiety. I know I've seen it with my four kids growing up in the different years of a lot of stress, going to a new school, changing school, or just going to school in general. Stress and anxiety cause some problems with our young students. And kind enough to join us from Akron Children's Hospital this morning. Really appreciate her taking time with us. Is Dr. Selena Magalotti with us? And Dr. Magalotti is a medical director of the Mansfield Behavioral Health and Child Adolescent Psychiatrist at Akron Children's. So she knows how to get into this for all of us because us parents listening right now this morning know exactly what I'm talking about. Lack of sleep sometimes, anxiety, maybe a little irritable with these kids as they're kind of scared and lack of better terms of going down that new road and 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 selena thanks for joining us this morning and you know we're all kind of lumped in that area and you've seen this a lot uh, what are some symptoms or some signs that we might not realize that maybe the kids are stressed and having anxiety about going back get back to school yeah thank you so much for having me this morning i think this is such an important topic that affects so many people um, I think you brought up several that are big. Um, kids will get nervous with um, their sleep at night, and they'll have trouble falling asleep, which is such a hard thing for them because sleep is so important for our ability to be uh, functional during the day. Um, they can get irritable and distressed, and when people are distressed, they can start acting out. They can get grumpy, respond in ways you wouldn't expect. Um, they can just seems like they're avoiding things um, uh, with going back to school. And sometimes we'll see kids have physical symptoms of anxiety, like stomach upset, headache, um, that are very real, that when they have them, um, it's not that they're faking them. Um, just because they, they, the more of it, when we're scared about something, it's just we want to avoid it. Dr. Magalotti with us from Akron Children's Hospital. Selena, with that being said, you know, sometimes parents are running around and we might not hear their cries, those silent cries for help, like you were saying, the headaches and irritability and some of those things. Talk to us parents. What's the best way to to handle that type of situation? Yeah, I think that normalizing for kids that it can be scary to do something new, but the more that we avoid things that make us scared, the more scared we become. So the really important thing is to really support kids to be able to transition back to school. Um, and we can do that in different ways. We can sit down and talk to them about it. We can talk about how we might have been nervous when we went back to school, and that's a very normal thing. And we can talk to them about what those fears are that they're having so that we can help to, to reduce those. Um, a lot of times uh, the schools are really want kids to do well, and so if kids are really struggling, maybe even talking at school about a kiddo coming in early, meeting the teachers, seeing the lay of the land can really be helpful uh, to help kids with that transition. Uh, Dr. Uh, Selena Magalotti is with us with Akron Children's Hospital. Stress and anxiety can come in a lot of different forms, as Selena mentioned, so in order for the parents to understand those symptoms, being aware of it, and being able to handle it. How far do you go with the conversations outside of the family, Selena? Sometimes we have a tendency to sit down and talk with Johnny or Jane, and let's keep it among ourselves. Do we share those anxieties and those stressful situations with the school itself to let them know where we are as a family? I think you can, and, and a lot of it does come down to the comfort level of the family. Um, I think that if it, uh, it's pretty, kids are, uh, schools are pretty used to kids being nervous, and I'm working with a lot of kids right now who are, this is the time that they're anxious about going back to school, even in kids who don't have an underlying anxiety disorder. It, it's, it can be normal to have that anxiety with these transitions, even if you're not going to a new school. And I think that a lot of it comes down to the comfort that you have um, and the trust that you have in your school, but I, I will say that most schools really do want to support kids and recognize that this is a normal thing that kids can have. And if we can just kind of help that over, them over that hump, that oftentimes that really can help things. Yeah, patience, right, uh, <laughs> Selena? That's a real key with, with the parents. And I know we're all busy and running around and everything, but they could come home from school and maybe some isolation and those type of things. we got to remember sometimes we get caught up in the busyness of our lives and forget that, these kids are dealing with these things. And if you see some of those symptoms out there to be patient with these youngsters. Yeah, absolutely. And really working on 
finding out what is it that's scaring them and what is it that's new. And, um, you know, sometimes you run into issues of bullying, and I think that's something really important to be aware of if that starts to develop so that we can help to address that. And I think that helping kids also uh, reframe for the positive. So what I've been working with a lot of the kiddos that I work with on is they tell me, some of them tell me they're not excited to go back to school. And so I try to talk to them about, well, what makes them not excited, but also what makes them excited about going back to school? Um, like what are they looking forward to in the short term, the long term? And I see kids bright up um, because we can get kind of stuck in those negatives, but trying to think more in the positive can be helpful for some kids. Yeah, I, I'm glad you hit on that. That's where I was going <laughs> next. With us is Dr. Selena Magalotti with Akron Children's Hospital. I think at least, and Selena, I'll let you expand here, real important not to spiral down that negativity hole, whether it's a teacher or a student or something that happened. And and I think it's real important to be positive on what you learned today. What was your highlight of the day and kind of be on the positive than sometimes a negative. You know this and and talking with children every day, uh, Selena, that sometimes that negativity can swell in a hurry. Yeah, absolutely. I I completely agree. And I think that, you know, we don't want to discount the negative they're experiencing, but also also reframe those positives. Because I always talk about, I feel like kids are like little sponges. You know, they pick up on the negatives, but they also really pick up on the positives. And their world is, you know, what's going on around them right now with their day, with their peer group, with their academics. Um, And so, yeah, really being able to think about how can we uh, think about what was great and what was good and what we're looking forward to can really help to kind of change that mindset to have more of a uh, hopeful mindset. Comfort zones, right. Dr. Uh, Magalotti, I mean, whether it's taking the kids to the school before it starts or having them making sure that you go to the orientation, make sure they go to the open house so that they get that comfort zone. That's real important, I imagine. Yeah, absolutely. Having um, feeling like feeling like less is unknown, I think, is so important because the unknown is scary. Uh, we all, as people, want to have control in our lives, and so the less that we can have that feels unknown, that feels uncomfortable, uh, the more likely we are to really prosper in those situations. Selena, let me ask you this: as, as we wrap up the conversation, a really good information with us this morning. If you're on a chalkboard. And you're speaking to all of us parents. What are the couple of the items at the top of the list in involving this situation that you would stress to make sure we look at in handling these youngsters' stress and anxiety? Yeah, I think the three biggest points is is to reiterate that for kids, that going to school is what we need to do. They need to go to school. We're not going to avoid it. And that the more we avoid it, the more anxious we're going to become about it. School is really important for kids. So that's number one. Uh, number two is that sleep is so important and getting kids on a better sleep schedule um, and starting to like move that up as we're anticipating going back to school. Because if we have good sleep at night, um, our ability to handle anything that comes at us the next day is going to be better. And that goes for all people. And then the third is that if things are really rough and, um, and we're not able to handle it at home, but talking to your pediatrician or seeking out, you know, behavioral health help um, is very, is really one of the better things that you can do for your kids if we're really struggling. And at Akron Children's, we have so many great providers that are here and really want to help. Perfect. Uh, Selena, thank you so much for taking time. I, I know this is a real busy time for you with a lot of discussions on this subject. So we appreciate the few minutes with us here on the morning show this morning. She's exactly right, and I know we've used these services with Akron Children's Hospital in the past to lower that anxiety, to lower that stress. These youngsters going through some tough times, whether it's a new school, maybe they've moved into the area, maybe going to high school the first time, going to first grade the first time, a lot of stress there. Selena, thanks for taking time for us this morning. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, and um, I'm happy to be back anytime.